after that. Uh, so officially welcome everyone. Uh, you're probably all aware, my name is Kaylee. I'm the executive director of the West Kootenai Regional Arts Council. As the name implies, we are the Regional Arts Council based in the West Kootenays, but through our programs, we do serve the entire Columbia Basin region. Uh, so that includes the West Kootenays, the East Kootenays, and all the way north up to Valmont. This is the traditional territory of the Snipes Confederacy, the Chinaha, the Suwetmuk, the Silex and the Laidley Tene Nations. In our work to support community cultural development, we acknowledge that we have a role to play in ensuring that all artistic disciplines and cultural practices can thrive, not just those of settler nations. In terms of the programs that we offer, we provide grants through the region. That's our Columbia Kootenai Cultural Alliance project. We amplify the work of local artists through publications like Articulate Magazine and showcase events like the Columbia Basin Talk. Columbia Basin Culture Tour. I say Columbia Basin a lot, and sometimes I flip the word. <laughs> uh, and we also offer professional development opportunities like this one. Um, and we were able to host this today through a grant. Oh, great. Lisa Martin's coming in. Uh, through a grant provided by the BC Arts Council. So we're very grateful for their support for this, uh, this whole series. And today I'm very happy to have Sydney Black with us. Sydney is the ED of the Nelson District Arts Council and the Nelson International Mural Festival, which she co-founded. She currently chairs the Cultural Development Committee for the City of Nelson, and she's an artist herself. She's the founder and artistic director of Black Productions, and we were just talking about how fabulous her most recent play was at the Capitol Theater. It was a horror, and I was truly terrified in like the best way possible. <laughs> Uh, so I will hand it over to you, Sydney. I'll keep monitoring the um, the waiting room here as people are coming in. I'll just keep keep popping them into the room. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Kaylee. And I just really want to give a big shout out to the West Kootenai Regional Arts Council for having me today. I'm really excited to share some of this. Um, I call it like like useless information that's in my brain from the last couple of years that I've just accumulated and I'm always like oh someone else might find it helpful thank goodness it wasn't just for the ridiculous things that we've done for the last couple of years so yeah so I thank you for for seeing the value in this and I hope that um y'all can come away with some uh special tips uh perhaps on on things that uh you know will help you get your live streams up and running in in many different ways so I thought I would just um quickly just to put y'all on the spot because I'm on the spot right now um can we just do a really quick introduction of just names and where you're at, where you live, and uh, the artistic discipline uh, that you represent, or if you're a representative of an organization? I just wanted to just get a quick idea before we start. So maybe I can just call on people and you can just, yeah, intro yourself. So Nicole, it would be great just to quickly hear from you. Am I unmuted? Okay, good. Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Norris. Um, I'm a visual artist. I am a multidiscipline artist and a life drawer and I live in the cusp. Thanks so much for holding this event. Yeah, in the cusp. I was just at the hot springs last weekend. It was awesome. I loved it. It was great. Um, and Anoop. Hi everyone, my name is Anoop. My pronouns are she and her. I live in so-called New Westminster. I come today um, as a visual artist, as well as a graphic designer. My practice is interdisciplinary. Um, and I also sit on the board of the Abbotsford Arts Council. So thank you folks so much for hosting this today. Woohoo, coming in from the city. I heard the weather's really good down there. I saw people wearing not jackets yesterday and I was like, oh. The oh. sun is out for sure so jealous so jealous it's cold here the sun's out here but it's a lie when the sun's out here right now so it's just it's tough um and lisa hi um i am a pottery artist and i live um just outside of nelson in beasley yeah yay awesome Thank you, Lisa. And I think everyone else is sweet, sweet staff. So yeah, so again, thank you for choosing to spend your sunny Saturday with us. And uh, I'm going to get this started. So I'm just going to awkwardly share my screen. It's only awkward for a second. Um, portion of screen. And then we go like this and go like this. I sing sometimes when I'm talking to myself. So I apologize in advance. Um, okay. 
So as Kaylee mentioned, my name is Sydney Black. I'm the executive director of the Nelson and District Arts Council and the Nelson International Mural Festival, which is a program, a project of the Nelson District Arts Council. Um, I'm very, very grateful to be living here on the unceded territory, territories of the Sinaiqs, the Silk, and the Tanaha, um, Yakimuki Nation. And uh, yeah, I'm just super, super stoked to be here today. So I figured I would give you kind of a little um, outline of the programs that we have that we offer currently um, and what we do, you know, day to day in our work and our practice and then um, I'll break down kind of the projects that got transferred to uh, sweet online status and we'll kind of lay out how that all happened and if you do have any questions, please, you can just because there's not that many of us you can just like unmute me and start, uh, unmute me unmute yourselves and just stop me and just ask away I'm super happy to ask things in the moment because I think there's going to be quite a bit of information coming through. So um, yeah, so just giving you a little bit of history on the Nelson District Arts Council. Uh, so we're a registered nonprofit organization. We were formed in 1969 as the Kootenai Columbia Arts Council, so we've been around for quite a while. Uh, we have an amazing board of volunteers who um, help us promote and encourage cultural and artistic activities for artists and arts lovers. Um, and so we access funding to help develop projects that help to support uh, the interest of both groups. Um, we have a bunch of projects every year, which I'll go through. Uh, we're really interested in fostering communication, networking, and providing support to our members. And in addition, uh, we provide small member grants through. So if you are a local artist and yeah, you're looking for a little bit of cash or practice, it's not huge, but there's some money there. So we do provide that. Um, and we definitely focus on advocacy, representation, and education um, in order to foster greater appreciation and support of arts and culture in the Nelson area. So as Kaylee also um, said that I'm the chair of the Cultural Development Committee for the City of Nelson. Um, and that committee helps to work with the municipality to develop a more coordinated arts, culture and heritage community. Um, also to make sure that arts and culture are always at the forefront of consideration when the city is making its decisions. So we really like to help um, ensure that art and infrastructure programs happen. Um, we also so help to provide granting. Um, we have public art rental program, all that good stuff. So again, very grateful to live in a place that uh, really truly appreciates um, the arts. And yeah, also it's beautiful. Check it out. There's the Orange Bridge. <laughs> So um, our current programming uh, that we are working on and have been for, for quite a while, some of it. Uh, so Art Walk, uh, we started the first Art Walk, I believe, in uh, Western North America. So that was in 1988. It was started by Anne de Grace. Um, that's a project that this summer in person saw 45 different artists um, featured in 20 different businesses as venues across town. And that program is definitely something that we took online um, during the pandemic. Uh, we have the Nelson International Mural Festival, or I may call it NIMF um, as its uh, acronym, and uh, that is a three-day mural festival that we hold every year in August. Um, we to date have created, I think it's like 40 two murals in town. Um, and then we kind of celebrate the creation of those murals um, every year with a three day street party. So that is fully accessible, open to all of the community. Um, and that is also a program that we decided we were going to take online during the pandemic. And so um, in the pandemic, we ended up doing 70 hours of streaming with over 60 acts for our 2020 uh, mural festival. And then we, we simmered down a little bit in 2021. And we did 30 hours of streaming with 40 acts. So um, got quite a lot of our online experience um, with that mural festival uh, programming. We have our Bigby Place Arts Initiative, uh, which is a program for adults with um, diverse abilities. And we bring in an artist from a different genre every month to lead those. Uh, those unfortunately were canceled because they are an in-person uh, program. So that didn't happen during the pandemic, but we've started those up again. We have our Rural Artist Support Weekend, which is an online symposium now uh, that features uh, lots of workshops kind of like this. So we look at kind of the unsexy side of art, like insurance and uh, what else, like marketing, all that really fun stuff 
banking, the fun things, you know, that artists don't really want to have to worry about. And I know that when I was first starting my uh, organization, my, my theater company, I was like, GST, what's that? So um, yeah, so we really want to make sure that people are coming to their practices from an informed business standpoint as well. Um, so that's something that we've pivoted to online and actually our sessions, little, little plug, uh, are happening on the 27th of this month. So you can have some other opportunities to take some development sessions if, if you so choose. Uh, we have a literary award called the Richard Carver Award. We have an artist residency for a single artist at Hidden Creek, um, which is just um, on the other side of the lake from Nelson. It's boat access only. Uh, we have a dance showcase, which prior to the pandemic, we used to uh, provide funds for local dance studios. And it's definitely changed a lot uh, since then. So now the dance showcase um, has been adapted to pair up uh, performance artists, so musicians who have original music, uh, which we'll talk about the copyright and original music thing in a little bit, but, uh, and they collaborate with dancers. And so we've been filming that for the last couple of years and have created eight shorts um, to represent and showcase dancers in our community. And um, and then we're also developing, uh, again, online, some anti-appropriation workshops. So we've found that um, a lot of artists in our community are not aware of the, um, the harm that they do in their practices daily by not uh, acknowledging uh, other people's cultures whom they might be borrowing from. And so uh, we really want to um, yeah, bring that awareness to artists in our community. And um, so that's something that we'll be doing on December 10th. So we'll be having um, genre specific um, anti appropriation workshops, which we are really looking forward to in an online platform. So yeah, so that's kind of our, our outline of what we do. And yeah, we have a lot of projects. And really, our main goal was, when the pandemic happened, there was all of this money flowing in. And uh, and we were really lucky being a nonprofit we, and not having a venue. We didn't have to sustain anything through ticket sales. We hadn't really been developing programming that relied on ticket sales. So um, so we were able to pivot, which I will try to not say too many times because gross, pivot. Oh. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we were able to pivot fairly seamlessly to providing most of our programming um, in a digital format. So we, uh, yeah, we got in there really really quickly and uh yeah oh and kaylee just dropped into the chat so there's the rural artist port weekend details in there so you can check it out how do i get rid of this now so that you don't see this anymore is the real question oh there we go um okay it's my it's the blind technology leading leading you all i'm sorry but we will we'll get there i swear i'm i'm i've done these things so be, be comfy <laughs> So next slide is, so we developed a bunch of initiatives uh, as a result of the pandemic. So we started a virtual art walk gallery, which showcased uh, all of the local artists on our website. Uh, we selected virtual gallery venues. So we found businesses that don't necessarily have wall space, but have larger so social media followings to uh, host artists on their social media pages, as opposed to their, their physical walls. Uh, we developed a uh, virtual artist talk series. Uh, we started to create virtual openings, uh, which featured live streamed host and pre-recorded or live performers. So we'll talk about that. Um, we worked on virtual workshops, much like this, online workshops, some solely in Zoom and some were live streamed to multiple platforms. Um, and then we created online concerts and events, so which are very similar to the uh, to the virtual workshops. They just have a lot more more moving parts. So I'm just going to go through uh, kind of how we developed these initiatives, and uh, yeah, I will keep rolling. Sandy Jahal Miro. Yeah, she's the best ever. Yes, and I should give credit. Let's go back there for one second. Thank you, Anoop. Um, maybe it's not going to let me go back. But anyway, the mural that was on the last slide is uh, by this amazing artist whose name is Sandy Johal. It's from Vancouver. And yeah, we're super, super grateful. She came up in like the thick of the pandemic. So we didn't even get to like, it was like 
2020 in June or something like that. So um, yeah, so we got to have her come and paint her largest piece to date, which was really exciting. Um, so yeah, so this was kind of what our scene looked like for us before the pandemic. So we're partying, we're on Baker Street, we're outside, we have hundreds of people gathered together, we're all having a a great time and uh and yeah and it kind of changed from this kind of a scene over to uh this kind of a scene um very very different and a huge part of why i'm here talking to you today so um we were able to pull almost all of our programming online and our main focus was to make sure that we continued to pay artists and provide artists with um, yeah, opportunities to make a living because that was what we felt like that recovery money was for, you know, it was for us as an organization, but it was also to make sure that, yeah, that people could keep on feeding their families. And so that was our, our immediate focus. And I was like, oh, we'll just put it online. I remember, I remember in March, 2020, like being like, okay, you know, or maybe it was April because everything was kind of up in the air and we were like, oh, it'll only be a couple weeks, you know, oh, it'll only be, you know, four weeks, maybe five weeks. And then it turned into, uh, you know, a real thing that we had to do. And I was like, oh, it'll be easy. So I, uh, I laugh now when I think back to, uh, to how easy I thought it was going to be. Oh, we'll just put it online. It's, it's so simple online. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was a little bit mistaken. So these are images of our uh, first art walk performances that we held in 2020. Uh, so it was really exciting. And this was kind of what we cut our teeth on as uh, in our online platform. So for um, for Art Walk, we really wanted to make sure that we are still providing local artists with that exposure opportunity um, and the chance to sell their art. But there was literally nothing happening in the summer of 2020. Things were very, um, you know, restaurants were just starting to open up again in June when we were first starting. Um, you know, people weren't gathering in theaters together for filming purposes. Like it was very, very strict. Um, so we decided that we were going to create a virtual gallery that was going to showcase all of our local artists and their work. Um, so we already had access to a WordPress website that we had created for the Nelson District Arts Council. And so we decided that we were going to um, try to develop our virtual gallery on that website. And so we went on and we ended up purchasing like a really inexpensive uh, WordPress e-commerce plugin on our website. So it was like a WooCommerce style plugin, um, which is really no different than any e-commerce shop plugin. And so our goal also at that time was not to be taking any funding from any of the artists. So we were decided, we decided that we weren't going to be brokering any sales. Um, so we loaded everyone's artwork up onto this e-commerce site and people were able to go to it and scroll through and see everyone's work and then all of the art um all of the purchasers were directly um oh my gosh my, my, all of the individuals who are interested in purchasing art were directed back to the artist directly and then the artist brokered the sales and they also dealt with shipping and all of that kind of good stuff um so we didn't take any cut at all. And all of this was set up as a result of um, a funding that we received from the province of BC um, and from the city of Nelson. Um, so the virtual gallery had multiple works by each artist and then anyone could buy the work. So it wasn't just um, because Art Walk has in the past um, been known to be oversaturating in the community, you know, like it had been going on for a really long time, you know, sales were kind of slowing down. So this really opened up a whole new world of um, exposure for us as the Arts Council, exposure for our local artists and opportunities for artists to sell their work to people from across the world. Um, we were really, really careful in communicating with the local artists about shipping, shipping expenses, dealing with crating and things like that, um, because that was something that a lot of them hadn't had to deal with before, um, and also how to charge people appropriately for those services. Um, it was also a really good option, and we did this in 2020 and 2021, um, because artists all had a varying level of comfort with showing their work in public at that time as well, so it gave people who weren't comfortable at all um, with showing outside of their studios still an opportunity to participate. And it also gave a whole lot of 
small artists the opportunity to have an online platform. So lots of local artists here maybe don't have websites, don't have that going on. And so this gave them kind of a landing page where people could show up, they could see their work, and then they could connect them directly, which was great. Um, yeah, and it also, again, like I said, giving people beyond the borders of Nelson the opportunity to check out the art. And in fact, this year was the first year uh, since the pandemics happened that we didn't do it online. And I actually had feedback from people who were like, please bring back the online gallery. We really, really want to be able to, to see more of that. And so that was a really, really easy solution for us um, to create this um, online gallery through a, just a little plugin that was on our website. So if you have a website, it's something simple that you can do. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to show you just like a little, a wee clip of our of our thing. Oh, maybe there's music too. I don't know if you can hear it. It's jazzy. So it wasn't anything super fancy, you know, you would click on one of the images and then it would just take you to a list of more of the artist's images. So Hey, I have a question for you, Sydney. Yes, please. Did you have to do any significant upgrades to your website before you moved in this direction and created space for the online exhibits? Yeah, so no, we had, a, we keep our website fairly up to date. So it was really just a matter of going on and finding an e-commerce plugin. Like it was so simple. And then for us, like where you as individual artists can price all of your work in that website and sell it through the website, we just said that everything was... I think in the back end, we said that it was out of stock. So then it just didn't show as having an option to purchase. And so then we would just forward people on through. But yeah, it was it was really, really simple, especially if you're using a simple like a Wix or a WordPress. You know, if you have a if you have a website, you should be able to find a plugin where you can you can do this. And there's lots of free plugins as well. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, so that was our little art walk gallery. I'm like. Everything's requiring me to click on it twice. It's been funny today. Um, yeah, and then as a complement to our virtual gallery, we created partnerships with local businesses. So, um, so we found businesses and actually individuals as well in the community that had large social media followings. Um, and we were like, oh, well, you don't have solid wall space maybe, but you have, you know, 5,000 people following you on Instagram. And so we partnered and uh, connected with a bunch of local people and they hosted artists on their accounts on their social media accounts so we ended up developing posts for businesses so that they didn't have to go through and create all the content because we knew that that probably wouldn't happen so we created all the content for them and then we distributed it and they were able to yeah take it and post it and so they featured a new artist every week um and then those posts also drove all of the traffic back to the online gallery which then drove that traffic directly back to the artist so they could make purchases so um yeah so we just did whatever we could to kind of make sure that we were yeah still still trying to make it happen still trying to broker those sales and still trying to support people as they sold their work and so this is uh Therese Ma um who's an artist who's now in Vancouver but she was in town and uh and yeah and just a sample post of of what we created um yeah okay and so now uh, we're going to get into the virtual concert slash festival slash opening. Um, and so these are a bunch of images of uh, clips from show or from um, some of our openings and uh, from the mural festival as well. So there's Mama Rude Giel, MCTH and O Pope. Um, yeah, there's some children's um, programming that we provided. And so this was definitely one of the more complex ventures that we embarked on in our digital adventure that we went on. Um, and we definitely tried many different tactics uh, before we found a system that worked and, uh, and was as reliable as the internet could be. Um, so yeah, so my, my First thing to say about producing any sort of virtual concerts, festivals, um, openings is that reliable internet is uh, is very, very, very important. 
it's like the most important thing in the world and uh and like testing internet and making sure you have sound checks and all of that good stuff is super super key um because yeah one bad cable and and you can be uh in lots of trouble and so we definitely had to navigate uh you know lots of trial and error uh for the festival for the mural festival one year we the first day we were having such a hard time like keeping our our frames up so people were everything was lagging um you know you know how it can be on like a zoom call it feels like it's overloading um and so we were dropping lots of frames and uh and yeah it turned out that we had a rotor that was a router, not a rotor, a router that was uh, that was old, you know, and needed to be replaced. And so there's just like so many different variables, but making sure that you have reliable internet if you are streaming anything is is uh, the most important thing. Um, so for our first art walk opening of the pandemic, which was in June of 2020, um, we hosted half of the artists that were featured uh, live from their own homes um, through through a platform and then the other half we had them pre-record videos and then we showed those videos um we had a technical team uh which comprised of uh, a streamer so someone who was in charge of the the actual streaming connections we had someone who was in charge of the like the zoom connections because we were bouncing back and forth between a live host who was situated in our office between performers who were live who were in their homes and then pressing play on videos that we already had. And then also um, as part of our crew, we have uh, like a safety monitor. So someone who is monitoring all of the chats on all of the streams and also anyone who's being let into any sort of Zoom room um, just to make sure that things are really, were really safe for everyone. Um, so we used for that first uh, Art Walk, an encoder program that's called StreamYard, which allowed us to have, you know, live hosts as well as videos, um, and also let us uh, stream live performances to Facebook Live. And basically, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but it's um, StreamYard is kind of like an online streaming studio where you can drop in videos and images and overlays, which are like the frames that go around the pictures that make everything look kind of professional. I'll show you some pictures of overlays in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, so you can drop all that stuff into one online studio and then have it stream out to, um, yeah, to like Facebook Live or Instagram Live. So it was super cool technology. It was just kind of, you know, starting to get better. And since we've started, it has increased its awesomeness exponentially. So, um, so all of this technology has really, really, you know, Gone, gone up in quality, which is which is great for you. Not as not as awesome for us back in back in ye olden days of 2020. Um, and so from this first event, what we really learned um, was that multiple live stream performances from different locations is really really hard to accommodate, and it's hard to make look professional. And it's funny because I um met with one of the women who runs Base Coast Festival that summer. And I remember it was it was like May and she was in town and we were sitting at the park and she was asking me what my plan was for what we were going to do. And I was like, OK, well, we're going to do this festival. We're going to do half live and half pre-recorded. And she was like, Sydney, do not do like live performance acts. And there are too many of them. She was like, pre-record whatever you can. It will alleviate so much stress and there's just so many variables. And so um, so I did not take her advice for the first art walk and we streamed people. And then uh, and then I did take her advice moving forward. And we changed after that first art walk to uh, mostly showing pre-recorded performance artists um, and then still having live hosts streaming from either our office or streaming from another location if they're from Vancouver or something like that. Um, so yeah, so that was what we found. The feed when we were streaming live musicians is not always reliable. The sound is super challenging to mitigate. So unless you have professional quality gear, um, yeah, it, it can be choppy. It just can potentially not sound like you want it to. And so, um, and so much depends on people's internet speeds. So it was really, it is really imperative that if you are going to host an online event um, with lots of artists at different locations that everybody gets to do a sound check and like a run through before the event happens. And so that's definitely something that we've done. We always move through every single piece of our events before we actually 
put the event live just to make sure that, yeah, that someone in like Bella Coola doesn't have poor internet and then we drop their performance halfway through because it it loses connection. So um we also decided uh yeah like I said that we would just keep it pre-recorded. That was our that was our major learning point. Um and then that lets us also control any sound issues. And then the other awesome thing about having things pre-recorded was that all of these artists had material after they were done and they were able to use it for promo. So once we wrapped then we just passed all of their um yeah their recordings back to them and then they were able to use them on their websites and and all of that good stuff. Hi, Bess. It was fun to host. You were a great host. We loved having you host. So I'm just going to show you if this will allow me with my awesome technology, just a little chunk so you can see an example of what um, it looks like, sounds like. Um, and this is going to be a little clip of Melody Dacian and Doug Stevenson, who did a live performance for Zoom for Art Walk 2020. And then after this, I'll show you a little clip of people that did a pre-record and you can see kind of the difference. So let's see. Is the sound going to work today is the question. Can we do it? This is so funny because I, ooh. And we'll hopefully Mel will pop up. There we go. Um, I, I'm not able to hear it, Sid. If you're if can, you no one hear it. No. Ah. Yeah. Sorry, Cindy. I just I, can't uh, hear it. I gave you sharing permissions, but I I just made you co-host. So hopefully you can let me see if sharing you're... sound an option as well. I think you have to enable sharing sounds separately. Okay. How do I do this? Let's <sighs> let's learn about this. <laughs> One sec. I'm just gonna stop sharing then for a second, and we'll just do a little. Here. Let's see. Share sound. You might want to yeah stop sharing and then when you start again I think sometimes it gives you that option to also share. Okay, let's see. Video. Sorry team, let us see. Um, just iteration and constant learning. It's great. Exactly. Endless so learning. Always. Endless. That's <laughs> that's all we do here is learn. Computer audio. Okay, so I think I can share my computer audio. Oy. Sorry, team, just give me one second. I'm just going to get my Zoom password so that I can share my audio with you. <laughs> this is why you always have a host, because then your host can come in and be like, I'm going to tell a joke while you do this technical stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was just looking on my end. When you click share screens, then make sure you go into the advanced menu and then you can say computer audio. is. Well. Yeah, I'm there. It's just asking for my password to oh, that's right, show that's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good. This is, you guys really want to hear this. It's going to be really good. So maybe while you're doing that, I can plug our upcoming panels and workshops. As Please well. do. Um, on Wednesday for emerging artists, we have a, uh, an intro to contracts and invoicing and sort of all of that um, paperwork that you need to get a handle on. It's being presented by the Canadian Alliance of Dance Artists, uh, but it's very appropriate for artists of any discipline. Um, they really specialize in working with independent artists to help them get a handle on, on some of that early career stuff. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then we have two sessions specifically focused on the LGBTQ community. We've got one on alternative revenue streams for artists. So maybe you want to host a Patreon. Maybe you're looking at what else you can build into a portfolio career to help sustain your artistic practice. Um, and building your digital toolbox is somewhat related to this, kind of some of the integrations that Sydney was talking about uh, in terms of marketing your work and getting yourself out there in a consistent way. What are some of those, those tools that you should be looking at? So yeah. West Cooney Regional Arts Council.com, WKArtsCouncil.com. Enter the workshops tab. And it looks like we're good to go. Well, maybe we are. We'll see. If it doesn't work, it's not the end of the universe. Um, here we go. We'll get rid of that. Let's see now. Can you hear? 
Can you hear that? Is there music coming through now? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. We will pause this. Let's pause this. Okay. So it doesn't matter anyway. You can see it as you look at the, um, just the quality of even the image. We'll just look at the image quality for right now. So you can see this was Mel and Doug. You can see it's kind of fuzzy. It's not super crisp. There's definitely, when you can hear it, some issues with the sound lagging a little bit. They sound actually pretty solid because they're using professional microphones and their guitar is plugged directly in. So the sound is actually fairly decent, but it just shows that there's not a lot of control over, you know, things peaking and stuff like that. So, um, so we definitely had some issues. Uh, it also, there's always a lag. So we'd be like, okay, we're going to throw it over to Mel and Doug and then there would be like three seconds where Mel would be like Doug what are we what are we gonna have for dinner and then it'd be like oh yeah welcome back to art walk so it just made things really really interesting um and we were like okay well that's seems stressful for the artist it seems stressful for us and then the quality just isn't um what we necessarily wanted it to be so um we then changed from doing this kind of thing so you can see the the video quality to this, which again, you will not hear any sound. I will just hear sound, but you can just see through the video quality what it looks like. So this is a group called the Orange Bridge Dancers. Um, and yeah. And so again, it's just like a better quality video. You know, there's definitely, it's crisper. The sound is way easier to mitigate. Um, yeah, I just can't, I can't stress enough how much easier it is to uh, to do things pre-recorded than to do them uh, online. So we also in doing this recognize that not all artists would have the opportunity to be able to and would be able to actually pre-record themselves. So in a bunch of situations, we ended up renting venues and we hired camera crews and sound people to capture the performances um, so that the performers didn't have to deal with that. And then we showcased those. Um, so uh, these are just a couple of images of our pre-recorded sessions that we had filmed for the mural festival. Um, as you can see, Nella Banner is here rocking out. Uh, they are uh, outside in Weimar, BC, under a tent because again, the uh, <laughs> When we filmed them, it was just, uh, yeah, it was, it, those, those were the times we weren't having a bunch of people in a studio uh, filming them. And so this was from 2020. And then this image up here is from 2021. Uh, it's Janelle Reed and Dee Landsberg, who is uh, one of the co-founders of the festival. And, um, and they're performing at a uh, performance space out of Vancouver. So we rented a club down there and we had one band who played for all of the performers um, and we captured it all. And then that was the the um, content that we used to, to stream. So yeah, so it was great and it ended up working out. And so then once we had all of our pre-recorded material all organized, we built a schedule for our event. So this happens for art walk openings, it happens for anything. And so you can kind of take a peek. This is our mural festival 2020, just a portion of the of the um, schedule. And so um, the funny thing is, is I didn't realize how much like television coordination this online presentation situation would be. So um, it's it's very closely resembles it. Um, and everything is completely timed out. So you can see we have all of our set time starts and our set time ends, how long each video is. Um, if we had to put the video Two, excuse me, um, on loop, um, you know, and so it was just really, really clear for everyone. It also says who the host is that's working with us and which technicians were working with us that day. Um, and also if it was a pre-recorded session or a live stream session. So, um, so yeah, so we just timed everything out. We also, um, have every pre-recorded video has a number that's running down here, the artist reference number. And so these numbers all uh, related to file numbers in Dropbox where we had all of the different files. So every performance had its own file, you know, every opening speech, every slide combo. So it, um, 
yeah, it was a whole, whole lot of work. And then also we were able to, in the schedule, indicate where we had space or not a lot of space. So you'll see this like green box, it's like, oh, you have a two minute breather break, you know, but there's also this sound check doesn't count, but then there's, you see red below it, which I can't scroll down to see it, but that's like, means like host, you don't have enough time to be chatty chatting about the trees. So just make sure you, you stay on it. So, um, so yeah, so it was cool to be able to kind of work with that. The one thing with scheduling these kinds of events also is you just got to like go with the flow and realize that it's going to run over most likely, you know, or something will happen with one of the videos at the last minute and you won't be able to use it. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's like live theater. Just, you can't, you're on the train, it's going, you can't stop it. And, uh, and yeah, and we tried to schedule as closely as possible, but usually we ended up running, you know, 15 minutes at least over every session. So just like a real, just like a real show. Um, any else, any other information? I think that that is that. And then making sure that the data that you have that's backed up into this Dropbox file that I've talked about is also backed up somewhere on a computer on a hard drive that you have access to because yeah, again, we'd love to rely on technology, but it can be dodgy and, um, and yeah, it's key. It's, it's key. Having lots of backups is key. Backups and sound checks. And so now I'm going to talk a little bit about those overlays. So this is the overlay situation that I was talking about. So it's like a frame that goes around uh, people presenting. Um, so we created overlays that accompanied all of the acts and hosts. And also we developed slides that are shown in between our sets of our um, openings and performances and events um, where we can acknowledge our sponsors and we can show our codes of conduct for online, which I'll show you later. Um, and we can promote other programming that we have happening. So we did all of this design in Canva um, on top of base templates that were designed by local designers. So we had someone design this bottom portion of it, and then we were able to, you know, fill in extra information if we needed to around their design. Um, and for the mural festival programming, uh, we purchased music clips from local musicians, and we played those over top of any of the um, of the slides that we had in between. So anything that was like, this says like up next over the world, and then it would go to like sponsor slides. And so uh, we would we would pay for local musicians to create music for us. And then we'd edit that music over top of the slides in iMovie or in DaVinci Resolve. Both of those iMovie's free if you have um, a Mac and DaVinci Resolve is a free program on the internet as well that you can use for film editing. So they're really great options. Um, and it was easier to overlay a music that wasn't Canva's music outside of Canva. Canva is really great because they have canned music that you can use in Canva. Um, but as soon as you want to import something else, it gets a little bit tricky. So, um, but Canva does have royalty free options if you don't want to use original tracks over top of, over top of things. And then, yeah, I guess this is like not as exciting because there's no music and you can't hear Clinton's music, but I'll just show you just a little portion. So this is what our slides say this is like a, a sponsor slide so it just kind of goes through with some of our beautiful photography you can't hear it but there's really funky beats playing right now that clinton wrote they're great um yeah and so then that just kind of gives us an opportunity to acknowledge those sponsors and still make it look pretty and professional and yeah like a like a real festival um and then this was supposed to be a little example of Quinn Barron um, as one of our hosts in our office at um, Mural at Art Walk, uh, but unfortunately, that's not going to happen for it now for us to see it. Uh, but yeah, just want to talk about local hosts um, as well as hosts from away. So we would set up local hosts in our office. Uh, there was a camera that we have that's connected directly to our master or our lead computer. Sorry, um, and then all of the that content of the live host is streamed directly from the computer out um, and then the hosts from away we had signed into a zoom room so our tech then would overlay their zoom feed into our live stream and then the hosts also had a script so the hosts have a script that looks a lot like the schedule script that i just showed you um, and then it just notes like who's up next uh, what the phonetic spelling is for any of the words or any of the artist names that they might need the artists pronouns um, and any particulars that we would want mentioned so the hosts would have a script that they could follow along 
long and I say the hosts can also buy you time if you have any technical difficulties, which can be incredibly helpful. Kaylee was my host today. Thank you, Kaylee. That was incredibly helpful. Um, yeah. And so, ooh. so then we take all this content, the slides, the Zoom links, and everything, and we put it into an encoder. So that's what I just want to show you. So the content is either your pre recorded video or your live camera feed. So that live host with a camera plugged in being fed into your computer or a Zoom window. So that's the content. And then in order to get it online, so we're just gonna talk about the streaming process here. You have to put the content into an encoder. So there's lots of different encoders. Um, we've used StreamYard before, and we've used a platform called OBS. Um, and so these are, yeah, like I said before, basically they're like an online platform where you can take your content and drop it in to the encoder and then the encoder gets that content and puts it out onto the platform. So your platforms are like your Facebook Live, your YouTube Live, your Twitch or your Instagram Live. Um, there are free encoders. So OBS is a free encoder, but in order to make sure that OBS goes to, if you want it to go to multiple platforms, so if you want it to go to Facebook Live and Twitch, then you also have to purchase a thing called Restream, which makes that happen. Whereas StreamYard is its own independent um, streaming service. So you you pay uh, anywhere from 20 to $50 a month for StreamYard, and then they will directly put it out to the platforms. So there's tons, again, of different encoders you can use. There's all different levels of ease. So you just have to find something that feels like it's natural to you and, and work within that. Um, yeah, and then you can get your message out to all the platforms. You can you can even like stream to LinkedIn, which I was like, weird, but great. Hanging out on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then I just want to talk quickly uh, about a couple of benefits and disadvantages of the different platforms. So um, copyright is a pain in the patootie, super important pain in the patootie, um, value it very much, pay artists, yay, um, but definitely you can come up against copyright issues um, on YouTube and Facebook, um, and we've even had issues making the claims go away because we've had, you know, the actual artist performing and we still get a copyright infringement, so um, it makes it really hard to stream anything that uses popular music to any platform that isn't Twitch, so we stream to Twitch because it's kind of like a deep DJ based platform and there weren't as many um back back in back two years ago there weren't as many copyright infringement issues um but we've definitely found that uh we've worked with Facebook before and it gives you warnings as you're streaming your copyrighted music and they're like we're gonna cut you off like you're using copyright music do you have the approval and then if you press yes even if you don't uh then they cut you off and they just shut your your stream down and then if that happens to you multiple times then they will take your account away and the same thing is with YouTube like YouTube will um eliminate like they'll mute out portions of your recordings of your videos that have popular music on them and so um that's definitely something that we've had to take into consideration and that's a big part of why we've done the dance showcase now how we are doing it with local musicians with um yeah with with the performers, because we know then that it's probably not going to be copyrighted. But yeah, even working with like, um, there's a, a rapper named Emotions, who all of his stuff is fully copyrighted, and we've had flags before, and it's like, but he's performing his work. And so, um, yeah, so just a kind of a thing to keep in mind is that copyright can be tricky. Um, <laughs> I said it, at one point, Twitch was the most lawless, but I'm not totally sure where Twitch is at now because we haven't had to stream anything there recently. Um, each of these platforms have varying lengths that you can stream for. So, um, so if you are going to do a massive 70 hour stream, like we did, uh, in chunks, obviously, like you wouldn't want to do that on Instagram Live because their cap is four hours, Facebook's is eight, YouTube's is 12, and Twitch is 48 hours. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking at doing. Um, and then a really beautiful thing about these platforms that we found is that they're really amazing for interaction between audiences and the performers in the chat. So we always tried to have our pre recorded. Um, 
artists be available in the chat so that they could have dialogue with the individuals who are watching them. So um, that's really exciting. But one thing to also consider on these platforms is that if you are going to be streaming to them, that um, safety is a really large concern and you want to make sure your viewers and the artists you're working with are safe um, if you're going to be working with the chat open. So I will talk about online safety in just a mo. Um, so this is a quick overview of how we've done meetings. So we've gone through our virtual galleries, we've gone through our events, um, and this is our meetings workshop situation. So we've hosted our AGMs online now and have done lots of workshops like this one in a digital format. Um, and for us, they really work. So I think we're going to continue to offer our winter workshop series online because it's really increased our ability to connect with individuals beyond the community. Um, and generally, we don't stream our AGM or our workshops to any platform, um, and they're held in a private Zoom room um, so that you know, we can keep it as safe as possible. And then participants are sent a Zoom login, much like you were today. Um, and presenters are pinned, much like I am today. So um, yeah, and it's nice, you can kind of see when people are around. And it's cool to kind of build that community. We definitely watched online festivals where they held them all in Zoom room. So you would have like 100 people in a Zoom room watching a pinned screen. And it was cool because you could chat and, and see each other's reactions. Um, so at each online event, so we're going to talk about safety. This is an example of our community guidelines that we use. Um, so we have a dedicated staff member at each event who is fully committed to ensuring that our spaces, um, the Zoom rooms, as well as in our social media channels are safe, as safe as possible um, for our presenters and participants. Um, we always create a really clear outline of guidelines, community guidelines of what is and is not acceptable in our space. And then we have someone on board who can remove people from the space or block them if needed. Um, it's really key to have that person there because I've heard of awful things happening before, you know, like, yeah, for you, you, you can imagine. Um, and then it's also really nice to work in Zoom because Zoom has lots of settings that help keep making those spaces safe and um, really just focusing on allowing people into the space one at a time so that you can't have a whole plethora of humans zoom bombed uh, is also a really good tip because yeah because it can get overwhelming and people are awful on the internet sometimes so keeping those spaces safe and being really clear about expectations is key um, and then just a little note on accessibility. Um, so these are just some stills from a bunch of our programming. You can see that they all have um, closed captioning involved. We also uh, use American Sign Language interpreters as well. Um, but I couldn't find any stills of them because uh, those were not, uh, those live streams weren't retained. Um, but this is really our online programming really pushed us into the new realm of accessibility that we're focused on. Um, and so we brought in ASL interpreters and make sure that everyone has the opportunity to participate in our online and in-person events. And now we are actually working with the same online interpreters in person, which is great. Um, and we're really focused on continuing this. And we were the first festival in the Columbia Basin to have ASL interpreters at it this year, um, which was really exciting. So, um, so yeah, so it's just really awesome to be building these relationships as a result of this, uh, this wild pandemic and then being able to bring what we've used online into our in-person programming as well. Oh, there's Sandy again. <laughs> and then hire a pro. If you could see this video is me, you can't hear me, but you can, I'm, I'm singing. This is what it's like to do a festival in a pandemic as everyone's all masked and like trying to stay away from each other. And yeah, it's a, uh, the office is tiny and sweaty and, uh, and yeah, we're all just hanging out with our masks on. Um, so yeah, so this is, these people in this room are amazing pros. And that is one of my huge tips is that if you are going to embark on like a multiple uh, act stream session that you look at hiring someone with experience uh, to help you take that on, um, especially if you're a performer in the event. Um, and so all of these humans uh, that I've listed here are amazing. They have amazing streaming skills as well as other awesome tech skills. Um, and they are huge assets. And I know like Shane did all of the Castle Jazz streams and um, 
Dave and Avi have worked with us on the mural festival and Anthony did all of our art walk stuff. And so um, it's just really great to have people that really understand all of the nuances of online streaming because so many things just come up and uh, and having people with experiences is very, very valuable. And so my my takeaways from streaming, this is a picture of Onesie Parade with Carlo Alco filming them uh, for our 2021 festival. Um, yeah, my takeaways about streaming that I can share with you is it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be when we first started. Uh, and that organization is uh, very key. So having those really clear schedules, clear communication with artists and hosts, um, that the performers that you're working with have to fully buy in to participate. So um, making sure that they are creating content for you to use that is like engaging and sounds good and looks good, um, or that the performers, if they're being live streamed, have, you know, all of the correct gear that they might need to make sure that it sounds again, good and looks good and that their internet is awesome. Um, I learned that technology is fickle, even when you have everything in place, something will potentially happen, just like in all events, coordinating online is no different. So um, yeah, just like recognizing that you uh, can only do what you can do. And that was the thing. It was so funny. We would drop streams and the tech guys would be so stressed out and I'd be like, whatever, it's just going to happen like this. So um, yeah, just being really gentle with yourself as you're engaging in your new land of technology. Um, and also I learned uh, that artists are so amazing and adaptable and willing to do what they need to do to continue to create. And that was really what blew me away is that uh, this required like a whole entire sector to shift its perspective and its way of doing things. And everyone was just so wonderful and willing to do that. And so, um, so yeah, I was just totally blown away at all of these humans who, because it's not, you know, it takes more than one person to make this happen. So all these people coming together and, and learning and adapting with us. And I'm leaving this chat with a beautiful picture of a hug, my friend Chelsea D. E. Johnson. Um, and just, yeah, it's wonderful for us to be able to program in person again. Uh, but again, the lessons that we've learned with our live streaming situations have uh, continued to be very, very useful for us as an organization and for workshops and AGMs. It makes huge sense for us to continue to hold them online. Um, we also now have these awesome skills where we can stream our festivals online and just that just increases our access. And and yeah, now we can go forward and live in an awesome world where we can take advantage of uh, of both, both kind of areas of performance, live and digital. And that is that. Is anyone sleeping? <laughs> That was awesome. I have a question, but I hope that other people do too. So I'll, I'll wait and then I'll allow yeah. you. Does anyone have any specific questions at all? Yeah, Nicole, please. Um, because I'm looking at forming some kind of disabled um, alliance online that would work this kind of program. I'm just wondering if you have other programs besides Twitch, Facebook, like, did you look at Discord? Did you look at Stream? Did you look at, or Steam? Did you look at other streaming things as well? Or was it just strictly the social media kind? So we did use Discord, but that is all. We didn't use Steam. So, and we used Discord, I think only for one of the art walks in 2020. So we haven't used it recently. So I wouldn't be able to speak to them to date but yeah it's all been very like obs based for the mural festival for sure and going directly to those streaming platforms but like discord would be a better option because you're not going to get shut down all the time with the copyright stuff especially if you're using that kind of material yeah and there's no time limit with discord yeah it lasts forever totally so okay just yeah. that was my question thanks no no problem best did you have a question Yeah, I was just hoping that maybe some sort of technology has emerged that allows people to play music live together over distances online. You know, I just keep hoping. <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah, so there was, um, I'll send you an email about that because there was definitely 
I can't remember what it was called. There was definitely an online jam space that was being developed that they were trying to work, but nothing that we have found that has worked super well. Um, if you talk to Dave Ronald best, he has like a full online collaboration that he has with this woman out of California where they work together, but I don't know that it's like live working together. I think it's more of like a, I'll video this and then send you this and then you overlay your stuff over my video, which is kind of what we were doing, but it's so hard because latency is such a a silly thing and just internet like really I didn't understand how like even good internet is bad internet you know like it doesn't it just doesn't work out well so but I'll look into it because there was definitely there was um I can't remember but I'll have to find it in my email there was definitely a platform that was like oh we're there we're almost there that I'm I'm I was kind of skeptical really? about that <laughs> yeah exactly really but yeah I'll see if I can find it and I'll send it over to you <laughs> that'd be awesome i heard of um i heard of one that um worked if you were within a close geographical distance and you had to have a specific box um so all your your participants had the specific box and you were within a certain um yeah you know i will i will totally i'm very curious too but i will look into it and i'll ask dave too if he's come across anything that would be awesome yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? I've got a super predictable question. <laughs> oh, I love it. Give it to me. I just want to ask you about the financial side, because in 2020 and 2021, I was involved in the transitioning of a, an outdoor dance festival to an online format, similar to, to the kind of work you were doing. Um, and as a board, we we were expecting to save some money by doing that. And then we realized, <laughs> oh no, that's that's not what happens <laughs> when you do this kind of transition. Uh, so I'm just curious if you could share some broad strokes about uh, sort of the financial implications of that wholesale shift online and maybe compared to the hybrid version. Yeah, well, um, it's all it's all expensive and doing a hybrid version is even more expensive. And so that was kind of the issue with the Art Walk Gallery this year is that we didn't have um, enough funding for a staff member to be able to develop that online gallery. So we had to let it go because we just didn't have the cash for it. Um, but yeah, like I said, things have been pretty solidly funded in the last couple of years. So we've been able to to make that jump. But again, like it's expensive, like hiring videographers and renting spaces and hiring, you know, sound people and then having someone edit it all, you know, like that's a huge amount of work, especially when you're doing like the volume that we were doing for that mural festival, like a week before I was like, too far, too far. And it was like, but it doesn't matter because again, you're on the roller coaster, you're in it, like you, you can't stop now. So you just got to keep keep on chugging little train. Um, so yeah, so I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's expensive. Our techs we pay, um, I think I pay them like $60 an hour as their for their technician suite skills. Um, and then we had like a flat rate that we worked with with um, within the like videographer and the film editor and all of that stuff. But it was definitely it takes like, yeah, three people to do what you would have one sound tech doing in a live setting, you know, and so, um, and then also just the gear, you know, to make sure that you have a computer or like a camera that's high enough quality. And so we've had to like purchase a bunch of, of extra kind of gear, especially when we were going out and doing the filming ourselves as well. And so, um, but yeah, it's definitely, again, like I said, it's going to be easy. And then it's like, oh, no, it's like significantly more work to do an online operation than it is to do something in person. It's just like, it's funny because it's way more work before the festival. And then it's way less work during the festival. But then also when you finish an online festival, you you wrap it up and you're like, OK, I guess we're going home now. <laughs> See you later. Like. Whereas like my my big thing for me is like that community connection piece where you're standing at Hall Street Plaza. And that's the thing is like I did that this summer where I saw like, you know, there's like 
500 people dancing and I'm standing up at the top and I'm crying because that's all I want to see. And I remember like the first, the first mural fest finish our 70 hours and all of these people and we've done all this stuff. And then it's just like, and the stream is over. And then it's just like me and Dave and Avi at one o'clock in the morning, sitting in my office alone. We're like, good job, everyone. See you next year, you know? So, so it's just, yeah, it's just not quite the same feeling, but, uh, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's special. <laughs> and we did it. That's the thing is like, we made it happen. And that was a huge, huge part for us because we just, again, we just wanted that money to go where it needed to go. That was what was really, really important. So but yeah, I, I would say like, if you take like, cause stage rental is really expensive and sound gear rental is really expensive. Right. And so it's probably almost balanced out, you know, there, but like production is, is quite spendy if you're doing it the way that we did it, but it doesn't have to be, you know, you can do what you need to do with a GoPro and a tripod and a computer, as long as you have good internet. So yeah. Well any other questions at all? I wonder, Sydney, if you can share how folks may be able to get in touch with you if they think of questions down the line or... Totally. So my email address, I will put into the chat. Um, um, yeah, and Anoop, I will stay on after everyone goes and we can talk about Rural Artist Support Weekend for sure. Um, so my email is info at ndac.ca if I could type uh, my phone number I'll hook you up with two and there's my phone number um so literally any issues if you decide you're going to do this and you're anywhere in the process or you're like who do I call who can help me with this like I have a list of amazing ASL interpreters um like there's we definitely like Avi just went through and did a full digital audit for us of all of our systems so we're looking at our accessibility and things like that so um yeah if you have any questions ever I'm so happy to talk about it and yeah stoked to promote your events and yeah help in any way that I can and this is why Sydney is so awesome and we're so happy to have had her do this. <laughs> Thanks and so I made it. I did an, I did more than an hour. I was like, what if I only have 20 minutes of talking time? But no, I can laugh at myself for like at least 15 of those 20 minutes. So straw it out. Um, thank you all so much for being so wonderful and for spending your Saturday in the sunshine with us. Um, yeah, and please, please reach out to me if you have any questions at all. Cool. Thanks for nice to see you all. Thanks. Have a great day. And Anoop, I'll stay on right now and just answer your quick question. Okay, so I will not end. I will just let everyone leave the room. Yeah, beautiful. This will just take a sec. <laughs> so I think what's going on is that the um it's possible that she just hasn't set up the right registrations yet. Anoop, I'm just gonna go to our website quickly and check. Cause I'm like, yes. cause so what I'm finding is the, it I think on the back end like it's basically if you try to link if you try to like click on one of the the tiles it like shows you are the owner of this account so I don't know if something's going on on the back end yeah so I think what she's doing right now is she's actually uploading the new tiles right now is oh, okay. I'm pretty sure what's happening because these okay oh yeah, so these are last year's tiles so if you check back tomorrow we'll have them sure. all uploaded and we'll have our new spots and then you can you can check it out then the poster that's on that page is accurate so it has the right the four sessions that we're doing on Sunday oh, okay. so you can check those out but yeah registration um she'll put them up this morning or tomorrow morning for tomorrow morning okay perfect I just didn't know if I was doing something wrong sounds you know, good you I'll are right and we are wrong it is our techno bad so don't worry about it. Thank you for awesome. letting me know. Thanks, Thank Anupin. Thank you for noticing Sandeep's mural and reminding me to give artist credit because I was yeah, like, Yeah, no worries. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Oh no, crediting the people. So yeah, thank just you. Just like Sand Sandeep. And then later I was like, Mama Rude Gal. So oh. yeah, I'm just excited. So yeah, because they're the best. We're so lucky. So amazing. Thank you for coming, Anoop. I hope you have a lovely day in New Westminster. And uh, yeah, this is great. We'll see you on the 27th, hopefully. Yes, take care. Bye. Awesome. You too. Bye. And Sydney, I have a question for you. Yes, yes. Uh, I just, there's um, Kelly Hill. Does that name ring a bell? I, just, I meant to bring this up with you at Rosanna's and I totally forgot. It's just, I, it's a cool thing. And I, I got to tell. No, tell me. I don't know Kelly Hill. 
Uh, so he's sort of the foremost, um, it's with my like advocacy brain. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is all happening. Um, yeah, he's kind of the foremost like statistician for the arts in Canada. He's awesome. Um, and like the guy to take available data sets and glean them for insights into the arts. So we're chatting next week because he has this really awesome um, Substack channel that he, he posts like we more or less weekly posts sort of diving into data and, and how it reflects what's going on in the art sector. And he just made custom posts available for 750 bucks. Um, so I'm gonna chat with him about getting some custom data done, just some basic stats for the Columbia Basin region, uh, which I hope would be helpful to Many I'll put some money in for some something as well. Well, it seems like actually Diana's like oh. on board to pay for the whole seven hundred fifty dollars. But I'm wondering maybe if there's like while he's in that data because the reason he made that all available now is the census data from 2021 yeah. is about to drop on the 30th. So while he's doing all that Columbia Basin trust data, I'm thinking maybe I could get him to do some municipal specific data. Well, if he did Nelson, I'll pay for Nelson if he wants okay. to do that. That's what I'm thinking is maybe I can ask him, is there a reduced rate since they're in this data sets anyway that I could put out? Yeah, or I'll pay 750, like whatever. If there's not, I'll just pay for it. But that's great. I would love that um, because everyone's always like asking me and I'm always like, I don't know. So that'd be amazing. Thank you, cool. buddy. Yeah, you're very welcome. I just thought, hey, if, if I can get him on the hook for that, because I was trying to think of like, how can I fund this? super specific data set and I'm going to need to get thousands of dollars for this and then he just put out like hey I'll do custom posts like just a you know kind of a single blog post diving into some limited data but honestly going into the CBT um I thought just anything is huge need. yeah just like some some data to get us started so um yeah after we chat on Tuesday I'll let him know that that you may be interested in some Nelson specific data and please yes so I much. would love that thank you so cool. much you're so Sweet. welcome um, yeah buddy okay we did it i did it it was okay was it okay was it helpful it was fantastic yeah i wish you had more people but it was it was great and the reach will be fantastic when we we share it i think probably yeah. most appropriate just to share up to the end of your presentation so yeah uh, that's great other people's faces all over the internet forever but <laughs> no that's awesome thank you kaylee so much yeah and send me an invoice for sure we've got 500 dollars earmarked for you uh, thanks butter that, that was like such an in-depth presentation thing Wow. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh God, oh God, too much info. And then I was like, I can't even organize this. And last night I was like, fuck it, just don't even organize it. Just put it out there. It was great. <laughs> you had so much more granular than like answered questions that I never even would have thought to have had. Like the the platform, whatever that middle thing was. Yeah, the encoder right? thing. I know it's stupid. Yeah, but so critical. And I I didn't know that was <laughs> it's so hard to be like, I'm gonna do this <laughs> workshop and I'm gonna be like don't do this it's the worst yeah <laughs> so bad <laughs> but, you know better, better darn well be prepared <laughs> totally sweet well, okay well i'm gonna go to the craft fair now so i will oh, uh fun. yeah Here's i will bug you soon we should have coffee again soon before the 16th we'll do some hangs love it great awesome. have a, good have a great day bye, bye.